Before we go on to 3A, there was some people who came in late, and I just would like to repeat an announcement I made earlier. If anyone wishes to speak tonight on any given issue, you need to sign up right over here with uh, our council staff. Thank you. Moving on to item number 3A, which is council items. A public hearing, first of two to approve two amendments to the 1985 sales tax ordinance. Examine and approve written certification of council secretary confirming required acts have been performed in order to amend such an ordinance. Uh, first, we need to call a vote to declare a public hearing, correct? So moved. Second. Watt? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Hogue? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Polishek? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Robert? Yes. Hall? Yes. DeWitty? Yes. Okay, now that we have it, we're open for public hearing. We're, there's one person signed up for that, and that is Mr. Finn Cannon. Mr. Finn Cannon, if you wish to speak, we now recognize you, sir. It's nice to see you. We haven't seen you in a while. Oh, after I get through, you'll probably wish you hadn't. <laughs> oh. I understand we spent $35,000 for an amplifying system here in this city hall, and so help me, I cannot hear, and I don't think anybody else can either. Uh, I think that would be number one in spending some money for the city. Uh, under the heading of this council item, I would have no idea that it had anything to do with the Arkansas River or appropriating $2 million to buy it. Am I out of line? Am, am I in the ballpark, or is that what we're talking about here? Are you uh, asking a question? Yes, yes. There's $2.5 million from the 1970, 1985 sales tax that will go for... Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter? Yeah. Excuse me, two and a quarter. That would go, two and a quarter million that would go for the purchasing of the land uh, at 71st and Riverside, which is, quote, uh, Helmert Park. Well, I'd like to share with you a little experience and knowledge about the Arkansas River that this land was retrieved by pumping sand from the center of the river over on the bank. That this is a riparian rights and they have no title to this land whatsoever. To sell it to the city under the pretext that they own that property should be investigated thoroughly. The money of two million point five could be well spent in buying right of way for the drainage system in the city of Tulsa. Almost all of the drainage system in the city belongs to private individuals. And the desire or problems of building a water system where you have to get the, the permission of the landowner can never succeed. We have the same people that designed the problem in the city of Tulsa trying to cover their mistakes that in the filling of the Arkansas River, it was a city ordinance that says you cannot move dirt from one area to the other without a public hearing, without an environmental impact study. To my knowledge, none of these things ever happened. If the city appropriate sales tax money that was appropriated to the city under a vote of the people of the city of Tulsa. And this body approves the moving of this money from one structure to the other. It has got to take the responsibility of the alternatives which the Corps of Engineers has told the people that own the property or claiming the property that they cannot use it for house structures because of the hazards of the Arkansas River. If it was a violation of the city ordinance to change the flow of water 
where was the people who are supposed to be in charge of public safety and welfare? And here we're asking, they are asking the city to bail them out of a bad deal. And I can only tell you from my experience with the Arkansas River and the flood problems that we're not doing nothing but encouraging other people to build in the river, which they have fully intended to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pincannon. Since this is a public hearing, is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, has any, one of the other requirements was for the documentation to be reviewed. Does anybody have any questions on the documentation? Councilor Ben? I'm curious, uh, if someone from the mayor's office can answer one, just one question. Uh, I'm, Several. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it has to do with the acreage, the 72 acres between Satan First and Averse on Riverside. Is that total 72 acres, is that all the acres between that 71st and 81st? west of the, of the of Riverside Drive? I might look back to Hugh McKnight here, but I believe the correct number is 67. Well, it 67 says 70. that's being proposed um, in this sales tax amendment. There is some remaining acreage that is owned by Fourth National Bank, and they have indicated a willingness to sell the land at the same cost uh, purchase price. Are, are we pursuing that, that sale? Because uh, if that's kept for private development, we will Everything be bringing that to the council in the way of a proposal, yes. Oh, okay. We just have not done so yet. I think it's very important because uh, it, there, there very well could be a private windfall on that if, if it's kept privately and sold privately and developed. If we develop parklands around that, that will definitely enhance the value of that property. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. There's another amendment that is also part of this, if I'm reading my backup correctly, on the widen uh, 33rd West Avenue, West 51st Street. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Do you not wish to finish with the first one first? Yes, by all means. Okay. Um, I don't know to whom to uh, uh, my my concerns need to be directed here. Um, I need perhaps a better clarification on the identification of 85 sales tax surplus. Um, and perhaps since this is uh, the first of two hearings here, perhaps I can ask for some information, some additional information before the second hearing. Is that possible? Sure. Um, like, uh, what is actually the amount? I, I've seen two or three different figures referencing what is surplus and i'm not sure that i understand what the surplus is and i'm not sure that i understand um well the total amount of surplus i fully recognize that there are some projects that have not been completed and i think i saw a communique from you mr payne that said you were accepting some funds that were needed for completion of that's projects correct. that's correct uh, I have a real concern about that because as I'm looking at that document, and correct me if I need to be corrected, uh, quite a few of those projects are in the district which I represent that have not been completed. So I, I'm trying to really equate what is surplus in the 85 tax package, how that affects the projects that aren't completed, and what's left, and what are the options for usage of what's left? The surplus that we have, and I want to put parentheses around that as being surplus, as far as indicating to you what is available to be appropriated for additional projects, be that new projects or maintenance, uh, is around $5 million at this point in time. I might say to you that that is a moving number based upon our concern over completing those projects. As we move through this program and complete those projects, we get more comfortable with 
the number that we think we're going to have left after we do that. But I can tell you, we are very conservative at this point in time as far as putting aside enough money to complete all those projects in that program. With that, given that number, as far as having been set aside, we feel at this point in time that there is about $5 million <coughs> that we can redirect towards additional projects. We are recommending $2 million and a quarter here during the budget process as we move through that. We've also recommended that an additional $2 million be used for maintenance projects. Um, this is 85 tax, um, tax package, and so five years have passed. Are we into any position of indicating timelines referencing uh, un uh, projects that are not completed? as relates to expending money like this because it makes it a little bit nebulous. I don't have that in front of me, but we have made projections on when we're going to complete these projects and how that cash flow is going to uh, be expended. And I can provide that to you at a later that. date. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Chairman Hall. Uh, I just met Councilor Hall. Uh, I would like for the city to answer a couple of Mr. Finn Cannon's concerns regarding proper ownership and the moving of land for the public's benefit as well as the council on that property that's being acquired. I'm not sure. I, I did not hear his questions, but again, one of the things we're going to do before we acquire this pro the property is ask that a title search be done. Uh, is that, was that one of his questions? Yeah, yes. One of the questions was he didn't think they had clear title to it. And the other was that the land was moved from the center of the river onto there. <laughs> Mr. Hart. The uh, portion of the property was reclaimed from the Arkansas River several years ago as a part of the relocation of the Joe Creek Channel Project. <clears throat> Joe Creek used to flow down and go uh, discharge into what's now Fred Creek, which is around discharging the Arkansas River about you know, somewhere north of 96th Street, in the 91st Street area. At any rate, it was diverted to the Arkansas River, and as a part of that excavation, they did reclamation of the Arkansas River. At the time, our understanding was that the Corps required a floodway opening of 1,000 feet on the Arkansas River, and the developer was uh, allowed to make that uh, landfill and reclaim that up to the 1,000 foot clear opening. So. As far as title to the property, I can't answer that question other than uh, they obviously felt they had title to it or they would not have been reclaiming the land and spending money to make that reclamation. And the danger of flooding? It's out of the 100-year floodplain. There's always some risk, but parkland is certainly uh, much more compatible use of floodland than is uh, commercial or office-type development. I understand there was um, <clears throat> an organization that wanted to purchase that land and put in some kind of businesses, and uh, somehow that was either the bank didn't accept their offer or something. Do you know anything about a previous offer on that land? I heard some conversation by John Moody, who represented some of the interests, and uh, discussed their proposal, but it, as far as I know, uh, the bank was not in a an obligation to uh, to make them the offer of selling the land. I would just think that if there, if there was an opportunity to put some commercial development in there that could bring taxes into the city, we might, you know, want to consider that. Well, we constantly hear the issue of bringing taxes into the city, and as far as that issue, you know, there's always the possibility that they may, in fact, uh, if, they're, if they feel they have a viable project, it may relocate at another location down the river, and so you have a park as well as commercial development. We see a lot of increased activity at 101st Street, for example, which has about the same perimeter relationship of the road to the river, and that's also part of the trailhead for the trail system, which is, I think, was part of their incorporated use was the extending of the River Park Trail. Obviously, the use of it as a park is going to be able to facilitate the extension of the river trail system, as well as 
they could utilize the, the area. So I don't think they're precluded from doing that. There may be... I think it uh, might be an enhancement then rather than an enhancement for commercial on down Riverside somewhere. Maybe. We see a lot of interest in commercial um, the, with the extension of Riverside. We see a lot of activity. So that's always back to you know. Depends on the investor. Councilor Roberts? Yes, um, Mr. Payne, I think. You stated that there was uh, something like $5 million in the surplus, surplus fund. Uh, is that money uh, allocated for parks or for other places? No, no sir. That, that is unallocated <coughs> funds that be, can be expended for any purpose laid out in the 1985 uh, sales tax ordinance. My, uh, my observation is. Uh, that if we have five million dollars and we actually put two and a quarter million for this park purpose, we have been attempting to get a few million dollars to do some economic development on our side of town. When we ask for that, there's no money. And this money seems to be now since 85. So uh, mine is, why is it then that uh, we are put on the backlog on the Back burner. Well, economic development is concerned, and something new comes up as it relates to 81st Street, and then they get four and a half million dollars. Councillor, again, I'm, I'm not familiar with, with the economic development projects that, that you're referring to. Uh, I just have a concern as it relates to you know as it relates to this because I know this is a new project, and uh, we have been attempting to get money <coughs> moving into the North Tulsa area, and we have not been successful. So I'm only bringing this concern so that uh, hopefully the counselors and the administration will look at this also as a priority. Anybody down here? Councilman? I'd like to pursue the additional land we're, we're trying to contract with. Uh, if a uh, contract is completed with Fourth National Bank on that, will that you know, in order to complete that contract, will that be in addition to the 2.25 million that we are, are approving here? Uh, so, in other words, the cost of the, the park would definitely go up, or is there matching funds to uh, commitment on the additional uh, acreage? Um, the we've had a, a letter of intent from Mr. Keller at Fourth National, expressing that. He, uh, that, the, that the bank would consider the same terms as have, have been offered by First National, 50% um, private funds, 50% public funds. So what, what estimated cost? The estimated think? cost, I believe, and I, this, is, this is a range of three to $500,000. In addition to what? Our part or the whole Correct. thing? Our part. 50%, 50%. Mm -hmm. For additional what? For the additional acreage which remains, I, I just would point out I don't believe we've received any kind of project description. I mean, th this is a case where what I know about this is what I've read in the paper. Which you should have received a ago. project description um, when the uh, press conference was. I believe, as I saw the information Mr. Payne prepared, okay. should have been transmitted. We will, based on the questions that have been raised tonight. Um, not only by members of the public, we will respond to all of those in writing as well as give you a, a more complete description of the project. would appreciate that. Certainly. I would tell the other counselors that I have given Mr. Payne a list of questions in writing and I'll make that list too available would, to you. We will respond to those, of course, as well, yeah. Councilor. Councilor Bartlett. Has the uh, Sales Tax Overview Committee uh, been given a presentation on this yet? I don't know, Councillor, and, and um, I, don't, uh, I don't know that we're far enough along in the process for when that would appropriately occur, but it certainly is something we can do very easily. I would strongly suggest that they be utilized, get their input to make certain they're aware of the project and are approving of it. Uh, secondly, is uh, if this were to be approved, and I assume title would be held by the City of Tulsa, is that, that true? No. We, we're going to recommend that title be held by the Tulsa Public Facilities Authority. And the reason for that is that 
should down the road the city of Tulsa wish to issue a general obligation bond <coughs> issue to refund, to repay itself back for the use of the sales tax money, we would have to acquire that land from someone. So we would in fact acquire the land fr from the Tulsa Public Facilities Authority. The reason for that again is so that someday if we wanted to issue a general obligation bond to, to pay back the sales tax funds, we would have the, the capability of doing that. If title is in the name of uh, TPFA, could that authority transfer a title on their own volition? Counselor? I would assume that they would lease it to the city of Tulsa. Could that, could that so that they could, and, and the lease would provide, I would assume would provide that they could not sell without the city's permission. That authority, though, is a pretty autonomous group, though, I, I assume. <laughs> and could they not on their, if they decided, I doubt they would, but assuming they might be given a, the opportunity, could they be approached by a private uh, development to lease that or act, perhaps even purchase it? Could they then do that without uh, uh, the approval of either the city council or the city administration? I would assume that it would be like a closing, that at the time the title was transferred to TPFA, that contemporary, at the same time there would be a lease from TPFA to the city, and the covenants within that lease would prohibit them from making any sale. Well, I would, it would be a, I would want to make certain that that does occur, because I don't want to have, that, uh, have the authority to <clears throat> take away the, uh, the, the rights of citizens of Tulsa, use that as a park, which is our intent at this point in time. I assume that will be part of the package. We don't want to give someone the opportunity to take that right away from us. That's all the questions I have. Uh, Councilor DeWitty. My only other comment uh, is, in the process of providing data, would you please, for me, convince me that given the legal parameters for using the funds, that this is indeed the best possible usage, knowing some of the concerns. Councilor, we will certainly endeavor to do our best to convince you of that. I think, as the, as the mayor stated from the outset, along with Mr. Helmerich, this is an unusual opportunity that has presented itself and may never present itself again from the standpoint of the amount of land, the location mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. and its availability. So we will certainly pursue that line of discussion further, and it might be helpful to the members of the council to have um, some update, and I don't have that at this time, but I will seek it in terms of what the private fundraising efforts are to date and how broad the participation is. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, Councilor I'm sorry to Ms. Savage. I'm trying to get the, an understanding on the, again, on the uh, the additional acres. You say it's five acres they're trying to contract? Um, I don't know the total amount of acreage, Councilor. I'll have to find that out. Well. Um, I think I think it is in excess of five acres. I would hope so because we're spending 4.5 million on 67 and a maximum of 500,000 for five acres. It, it just uh, it would be a maximum. It, the 500,000, the three to 500,000 would be the city's participation. Right, so it'd be one million total right. for five acres. Doesn't compute. Does just does <laughs> uh, the land values so, just doesn't compute. Not, not, unless you, not unless you use the original, unless you use the original no. appraisal on this property. Well, yeah. is Fourth National giving us some mineral rights on that property? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I will. I will get that information for you. Thank you. The total amount is. Any other questions as relates to the Helmut Park? I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, they're not making any more land out there by the Riverside Park in that area. And uh, originally, uh, when, when First National Bank made a loan on this property, it was valued at $200,000 an acre, which is quite, quite a tremendous amount. And when private sector is coming up and willing to match 
50, on a 50-50 deal, uh, a project like this for the city, uh, which will merge two other uh, rapidly growing areas from the Creek Turnpike to the uh, Riverside Park area. Uh, I think it is an outstanding opportunity, and if we let that go by, shame on us. I am aware of your comment, and I appreciate it. <laughs> there is a second item on the public hearing, and that has to do with a West 33rd, excuse me, South West 33rd, 33rd. South 33rd. South 33rd West Avenue. Thank you, Don. Uh, West 51st Street. Do you have any comments that you'd like to share on that? Uh, yes, I would like to share some light on this particular project. They are widening uh, 33rd West Avenue from 51st to 61st, and that was part of the 85 sales tax project. And it extends, I think, 300 feet. Is it 300 feet south of 61st? Well, just beyond that is a hill, a very steep hill that several people have been killed on uh, because the road is so narrow. There is an apartment complex right at the top of the hill with an exit out there driveway and a street that comes in from the west side. And uh, many, many accidents have happened in that, in that area. So <clears throat> this particular project would not widen it to four lanes like the rest of 33rd West Avenue, but it would cut that hill down and, and make it uh, a safer hill and maybe save some lives. And that's the whole purpose of, of this additional money on 33rd West Avenue. Charles, would you like to add to that? I'd like to mention also that this is a, a matching program between us and Tulsa County and uh, Creek County. We're putting up roughly half the money in Tulsa County and Creek County together putting up the other half. I think we got Tulsa city limits on the east side, Creek County on the, the west side, and Tulsa County responsible for the road. Now, how that came about, I have no idea. County but anyway, it's, dead center in the street. it's unusual. Was, was there no one signed up for this? Uh, I was just going to ask, there's no one signed up. Is there anybody in the audience who failed to sign up to speak on uh, South 33rd West Avenue? <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, is there any other comments on either one of these two uh, items in the public hearing? One other question is that, um, I believe that 300 is, does that mean that Tulsa's part, the $150,000? Yes. Tulsa's part. Yes, Tulsa's part. That's right. I make a motion we uh, close public hearing. Second. Any, any discussion on the motion? <coughs> on the roll? What? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Hogue? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Polishek? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Robert? Yes. Hall? Yes. DeWitty? Yes. Well, this will appear again uh, on the, uh, on the 16th. 16th. Okay. Oh. That's out of district. Out of district, right. Yeah, I would like to make a comment on that, that the May 16th meeting is out of district at the uh, Tulsa Theater Center? No. American, American Theater Company. American Theater Company. Very close to where the Brook Theater is located. Okay. Okay. Uh, we also need to uh, approve the uh, secretary certificate. Formally. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Secretary's certificate. That, that she did all the things necessary, oh. the advertisements, yeah, to, uh, of this meeting. Oh. It's part of the elaborate procedure that goes through. To amend that sales tax. In your opinion, Mr. City Attorney, has she followed all the steps? <laughs> I said I approved it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, call the roll. Watt? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Hogue? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Polishek? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. 